Trinidad and Tobago's carnival a dazzling explosion of colour, rhythm and spirit, a testament to a nation that, at first glance, seems like the epitome of multicultural celebration. But like the intricate patterns on a masquerader's costume, Trinidad and Tobago's tapestry is complex. Beneath the jubilation of carnival lies a deeper story, an interplay of identity and internalised racism. Afro-Trinidadians, the backbone of the carnival's rhythms, bear a history of struggle. From the chains of colonisation to modern-day biases, their resilience shines through, even as challenges persist. The Chinese Trinidadian community, with their own rich traditions, meld into this mosaic. While they add to the island's vibrancy, they too navigate a web of stereotypes and historical shadows. The luminescence of Diwali, the beats of chutney music, the Indo-Trinidadian community pulses with a duality of pride and the weight of historical prejudices. In the dance of Trinidad and Tobago's diverse cultures, the tales of smaller ethnic communities often whisper. Their journey is layered with unique challenges, from trade pigeonholes to global misconceptions. Beyond the vibrant dance of carnival, Trinidad and Tobago pulsates with layers of history, culture and hidden dynamics. Let's uncover these stories, woven deep into the very fabric of the Twin Islands. Originating from the tales and rhythms of Afro-Trinidadians, Calypso became a voice for the marginalised. Over time, Soka evolved, inheriting Calypso's essence, but with a modern twist. Still, there were times when these genres were sidelined and perceived as less refined compared to other imported musical styles. In colonial Trinidad and Tobago, ballroom dances and classical genres held the stage, echoing the tastes of the elite. The rise of Calypso and Soca to national prominence is a testament to the Afro-Trinidadian community's resilience against internalised racial biases. Rooted in the kitchens of Indian indentured labourers, roti and doubles started as humble, affordable foods. While beloved in Indo-Trinidadian communities, wider acceptance took time. Colonial-era Trinidad had distinct culinary hierarchies. European cuisines reigned supreme, while local dishes, especially those of Indian origin, were often sidelined. Today's nationwide love for roti and doubles marks a culinary reconciliation, yet memories of past biases linger. The Trinidadian Creole, a linguistic cocktail, encapsulates the island's rich history. But listen closely, and you can hear traces of bias. Accents tinged with Indian, Chinese or even African nuances have at times become subjects of jest or prejudice. Historically, the English accent, a remnant of colonial rule, was the hallmark of education and sophistication. Meanwhile, other linguistic inflections, representing the island's true multiculturalism, sometimes faced subtle disdain. Carnival might be Trinidad and Tobago's most famous festivity, but the islands shimmer with other cultural gems. The Shia Muslim festival of Jose, with its mesmerizing tadjas, recalls the pain of Indian indentured laborers longing for their distant homeland. Diwali and the Chinese New Year, though integral to their respective communities, didn't always shine brightly on the national stage. Over time, as these festivals garnered broader participation, they've become symbols of the islands evolving, yet still complex, cultural dynamics. The union of love, often seen as a bridge between cultures, hasn't always been a straightforward journey in Trinidad and Tobago. Intermarriage, particularly between Indo and Afro-Trinidadians, has historically been met with hesitance from both communities. While love stories flourished, societal pressures lurked. Misconceptions, stereotypes and tales of what will the community say often dictated personal choices. However, as generations passed and boundaries blurred, these unions became emblematic of Trinidad and Tobago forging their unique identity, even if challenges remained. The land tells its tales. Historical patterns of ownership and occupation in Trinidad and Tobago reflect deeper undercurrents. Lands primarily cultivated by Indo-Trinidadians often lean towards rice and sugarcane, drawing from their ancestral agricultural knowledge. Afro-Trinidadians, bearing their legacy of forced labour during slavery and subsequent transitions, carved niches in fishing, cocoa cultivation and urban professions. These historical economic paths, while a testament to resilience, also sowed seeds of stereotypes. Misconceptions about who owns what or who does which job subtly hint at lingering internalised racial biases. While Indo and Afro-Trinidadians form significant narratives, the Chinese Trinidadian community weaves its unique thread. 
arriving primarily as indentured labourers and later as entrepreneurs, they found themselves balancing between assimilation and preservation. While integral to the commercial landscape, Chinese Trinidadians grappled with dual identities. Stereotypes, ranging from business acumen to being insular, reflect the broader society's struggle to fully comprehend this community's multifaceted identity. Each tale, each nuance, underscores Trinidad and Tobago's journey. A journey where the vibrancy of diversity, while celebrated, is also tested by the shadows of internalized racism. Yet in these stories, there's hope. A testament to the island's spirit to continually redefine itself. Education and literature mirror a society's soul and have not been untouched by internalized racial dynamics. Trinidad and Tobago schools, once segregated along racial lines, have seen shifts, yet subtle biases persist. Today's diverse classrooms are a far cry from the past. However, traces linger in anecdotes of teachers favoring one ethnic group over another or in the disproportionate representation of certain ethnicities in specific disciplines or school activities. Trinidad and Tobago's literature has globally acclaimed authors who shed light on these dynamics. Their words, while painting the island's beauty, don't shy away from their internal struggles, often reflecting the racial biases embedded in society. Politics, the theatre where power plays unfold, offers a lens into the island's internal racial dynamics. Historically, political parties and movements in Trinidad and Tobago have been associated directly or indirectly with racial identities. While parties claim to represent the entire nation, perceptions persist. Some see one party as championing Afro-Trinidadian causes, while another upholds Indo-Trinidadian interests. Such divisions, while perhaps less pronounced today, are remnants of deeper internalized racial biases that once influenced political affiliations. Beauty, an ever-evolving standard. In Trinidad and Tobago, like elsewhere, beauty ideals have often been influenced by prevailing racial biases. Historically, there was a tilt towards Eurocentric beauty ideals, fairer skin, straighter hair. With time, as global narratives shifted towards inclusivity, Trinidad and Tobago too began celebrating its diverse beauty. However, remnants of old biases sometimes emerge, be it in casual comments or in the products that promise fairer skin. Trinidad and Tobago, a nation of contrasts, where the rhythms of calypso and chutney fuse, where roti meets palau, and where every face tells a story. While the shadows of internalized racism persist, they're juxtaposed against the vibrant tapestry of a nation ever evolving, ever redefining its identity. To understand Trinidad and Tobago is to embrace both its joys and its challenges. Thank you for taking this journey with us. If this content resonated with you or made you think, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more deep dives into the inner conflicts of nations. We value your insights, so don't forget to leave your comments below. Until next time, keep exploring and understanding the world around you.